What's up guys? Welcome back to the infamous project. We have now almost finished 2023. And with that said, it's been a time of a lot of reflection for me. In fact, I have been struggling to pick up the camera and get some content over the past few weeks because I've just been trying to wrap my head around 2023, a year end and looking forward and everything else. And me and Gary had a pretty, well, it was getting in depth conversation as in depth as I felt comfortable in getting on the podcast that's going to be released on New Year's. So be sure if you guys aren't checking out the roll of my 5.0 podcast, make sure that you guys do that. I'll put the link down in the description below. And it's a really good segment that happens weekly that you get to hear two car guys just bullshit and just keep it real. Sometimes automotive focused, sometimes it's life focused. It sometimes just goes completely in a different direction than we anticipate. And sometimes we have some really cool guests on there as well. So be sure to check that out. Now, talking about, I guess, the past and going forward and everything else, right here sitting behind me is a familiar face if you guys have been following the infamous project since day one. Now, I first launched my channel back in like 2009, I believe. And YouTube didn't live stream back then. I actually used a facility called Ustream. Now I've told this story before, however, my channel was still like this big. So since I've told this story, a lot has happened. The channel has grown quite a bit. And this car that's sitting behind me was still in the same place as it was when I told the story about how the infamous project came about. Now, it's gonna be a little bit of a story time segment. It's gonna be a little bit of reflection. Guys, I am honestly just gonna try and freestyle this video. I wanna limit my edits. I wanna keep it simple and I wanna keep it real. So if you guys are hoping for a whole bunch of getting my hands dirty and DIY stuff, well, as you can see, I am not dressed, at least right now, for that type of work. Now, this car was an original infamous project build. In fact, it was the first one that I worked on. It was this car and the Stalker Vert that were the two cars that I featured via live stream. So I promoted this on various forums, both BMW and Fox Body or 5.0 related forums as the term Fox Body was loosely used back then. And it was an after work project, basic hand tools, working in my parents' garage to restore this car and the Stalker Vert. Two cars, three months, one dream was my title that I went with. And it was a challenge, but something that I managed to pull off. Both cars were finished in time. They were both featured in Ontario's largest, maybe, performance aftermarket annual car show called Performance World back then. And they both, did they both? I think this car won runner up. The Stalker Vert, I don't know if it got something or not. I can't actually remember now because it's been so long, but it doesn't matter, guys. Like, I did it. I managed to accomplish it. And unfortunately, I put the camera down after that. And when I say I put the camera down, it was not a GoPro like I'm filming on right now where I could just pop the SD card out and make things easy. Guys, it was a Hitachi Handycam camcorder with an S video cable that was like 25 feet long, camera sitting on a tripod, set up in my parents' garage, and I'd have to physically move this thing around. That S video cord was going into a desktop computer with a video card, capturing all of the footage, going through a media encoder, and ultimately being streamed live via Ustream. Now, the other thing was connectivity. Cat5 cable, strung from my parents' garage outdoors over across snowbanks inside the house into the router so that I would have connectivity and things that the stream would drop or I'd hit the limit and the thresholds. Guys, serious pain in the ass and ultimately before it's time. Now you can imagine the camera's just set up and I'm away sanding or I'm doing wiring or I'm doing whatever and I'm trying to explain it, but I can't get the camera where I need to. And I'm trying to interact live with people at the same time. I don't want to call it a failure, but it was definitely a lesson learned and an opportunity to evolve and do it better when I came back around. Cause guys, I put the camera down. In fact, I 
didn't really do much automotive related. I still had cars. I still had all that stuff, but you know, I ended up in the Middle East for 10 years and it took a while before the infamous project came back and I started documenting and filming some of these builds. And amazingly enough, some of these vehicles are still around from back then. Some of them I've sold and bought back. The Lightning I did, the Stalker Vert I did, but the only car that I didn't sell is this one sitting right here behind me. Now this car actually belonged to a mutual friend of myself and Mr. Notorious. Mr. Notorious is my tall, skinny friend who um, has helped me out a lot on a lot of the builds that I've worked on over the years back in Canada. And the mutual friend of ours, Spenny, owned this car back in the day. I always wanted an E36 BMW back then when I had my 5.0s and I was just, they were always out of reach. 5.0s were $5,000 cars. These were ten dollars to $15,000 cars, let alone this one, which sports an AC Schnitzer package on it, which AC Schnitzer for the Mustang viewers out there is sort of like the Celine to Mustang, right? It's an aftermarket add-on aesthetic performance upgraded package that you can get on your BMW. As my E39 M5 is a Haman car. So Haman would be like your Celine or your Steeda or whatever you will. So Spenny had this car and I met him pretty much through the mutual friends and he was driving this around and one cold wintry day, cause he drove this car in the winter uh, when he was going to university, he had a fuel leak and the car had a remote start Viper alarm, which is actually still in the car to this day. And the car caught fire. The whole front end of this car, absolutely, it was crispy. In fact, the nickname of this car from my tip build plaques is actually Project Crispy. So needless to say, he didn't have fire insurance on the car, um, didn't get processed through insurance. He's just like, hey, if you want the car, you can have it, but it's burnt. So I picked it up off him and had to redo the wiring harness, guys. And back then it wasn't easy. It wasn't like you could just go and find a whole wiring harness for one of these and especially find one on the cheap. I ended up finding a whole fuse block and wiring out of a four door. And these just like Fox bodies every year had an involvement and changes in wiring and everything else. I managed to solder, splice, solder, heat shrink, the complete harness out of a four door and figured out all the wires that needed to be used in order to make everything work in this two door. And for any of you guys that are familiar with BMW, every circuit has like a wire or something that's gonna tell it, like everything is individualized, like the license plate lights and everything is, everything is on a separate circuit is the best way to explain it. And obviously body and paint and getting everything right. So there was a lot of blood, sweat, and beers. In fact, I don't even think I drank that many beers back in the day. And this is the car. Now, before I was moving to Dubai, I was like, what am I going to do with this thing? You know, I was kind of selling stuff off and trying to prepare my life for the transition. And I had the car posted up and I want to say for $8,500 at this point, E36 market was almost starting to follow that of the 5.0 market, you know, you could attainable five to $10,000 all day long for a pretty clean car. And I had the car up and part of me was like, you know, I'm getting the low ball offers. I'm getting all this and that. So I approached Mr. Notorious and I said, listen, man, I will give you this car. The deal is when I come home, when I'm on holidays, I get to drive the car, right? And that way the car would ultimately stay within the friend group and it would be around and I wouldn't just be selling it off to put a couple thousand bucks in my pocket, which I knew I didn't need and everything would be good. Well, everything worked for the first few years. So I went to the Middle East in what, 2011 and every summer that I'd come back out of my summer holidays, I'd grab the car. And in fact, we kept doing work to the car. Mr. Notorious actually had an S, 52 M3 motor that we ended up installing the one summer roll cage went in newer style seats, you know, maintenance items, everything 
that would just kind of keep the car going and keep the project evolving, which isn't a bad thing. Unfortunately, after the summer of 2015, the car got parked annually as it does. Remember guys, Canada, winter storage, you don't want it. Although it was driven in the winter before, you don't want to add salt to the wound, quite literally. And we can see there's a little bit of wounds starting to break out here on the panels. We'll do a little walk around here in a minute. So 2015, the car goes into storage. Again, another mutual friend named Andrew. And that is where I filmed the video kind of reintroducing the infamous project when I was reviving it. And when was that? 2018, 2019, I forget when it was. And the car finally came out of storage this year. <laughs> and now it's down here. So Jordan, Mr. Notorious, is going through a pretty big life transition as well right now. And I pretty much said to him, I said, listen, man, I appreciate and I understand everything about the car. The car went into storage because it needed tires, needed a few things. And it's just like, it becomes out of sight, out of mind. But I'm like, good number of years have gone by. I think it's time I take the car back and start investing back into the car, get this thing back on the road and get it because otherwise it's just going to deteriorate and rot. So here's the car. Finally came out of storage. It's down here. I'm going to be getting some content on it for you guys. Unfortunately, this thing had a whole mouse family living in it. If you guys watch my T-top video with the mouse piss, which I think that project's going to be called Project Pissbox Fox, I have been battling mouse pee smells for the past week. Two weeks in reality. Like, I have pulled dash components out and glove boxes and pulled sound deadening off um, that has all been full of mouse droppings and mouse urine and everything else spraying with water and vinegar and throwing baking soda on everything. It's worse than getting the smoke smell out of that white lightning that I picked up. If you guys remember that video or videos, um, yeah, not a fun thing, but it's getting there. There's about six coconut air fresheners in there at this point. I've been leaving the windows and the doors open during the day, especially nice sunny days like today, and taking advantage to try and get that smell out of there so it's actually drivable. Now, there's a few, there's battle wounds, guys. This is not a perfect car. Um, I've already gone through and changed the oil. I've put new tires on the wheels. I'm waiting for my new Viper key fob alarm so that the keyless entry works again. The key fob saw, I guess, some condensation or some moisture or water at some point. I tried to spray electronic cleaner. I opened the whole remote up. So I'm like electronics freak, you know? I love to try and fix that type of shit, but there was no bringing it back. So trying to find that old school stuff is not easy, but I found one. So without segueing off too far. I think where I'm going with this is that this is sort of like remembering where things started and where things are now, because in the podcast, you know, I'm frustrated to a certain degree, you know, because I'm reflecting about the year. I'm trying to stay, take a step back, put myself outside of where the infamous project is now, but I'm at my max. Guys, I cannot do any more than what I did in 2023. I could probably do things a little bit smarter. I could maybe be a little bit more efficient, but on my own, that's it. I'm capped. So I have two options in 2024, and this is not me complaining. This is just me like reflecting and admitting that there is a problem, and it's a very big problem that needs to be addressed in order for me to continue to progress and grow. And I do not have the solution nor the answer at this point. In fact, I'm kind of throwing this on you guys to get an idea of what you guys think, because ultimately I need more hands, right? And it either needs to be a business partner that's just as hands-on as me and that can dive into projects and that has knowledge or maybe more than me, maybe more knowledge or more experience, vice versa, or whatever, something where we can work together, play off each other and be able to knock out more projects and grow the infamous project brand. Or I need some really good employees that are going to be loyal and willing to learn and 
I guess loyal being the big one there, which this day and age, I just, I cringe at that thought. So I'm kind of at a position where I could keep doing what I'm doing, but guys, where I was when I built this car and the stalker vert, right? You know, some, how old was I? Late twenties and where I am now, early forties is huge, but it's, I've hit my Peter's principle. You know, I, I can't, if I try and take on any more, my efficiency is just going to deep dive and crash and burn. So I could keep doing what I did in 2023. The problem is, is that if I'm not excited for things or it's just sort of, this is as good as it gets for me, me personally, I'm not okay with it. You know what I mean? I need to continue to grow. I need more uh, things to look forward to, things to grow, evolve, maybe other segments or whatever. So the BMW coming back has actually allowed me to take my mind off of the five O's for a little bit because I've just been so busy with them. And I'm sure some of you guys can relate and just pick up because although this is sort of my story, I know that there's a lot of elements because every time me and Gary talk about our corporate switches or we talk about our transitions that we've done in terms of career and everything else, a lot of people can relate to what we're saying. So whether it's your project that's been 10 years in the making and you're not happy with the progress or whatever it might be, take a step back, have a beer, glass of water, whatever it might be, and consider what you might need to do to get to where you want to be. Not getting any younger, although I can get around and move around a lot. You know what I mean? It's automotive stuff's hard work, right? So need to work smarter, not harder, and really think about where I want to be for 2024 by the end and then 2025 and where I want to be by the time I'm 50. So that is pretty much the summary and the reflection for 2023. Um, I don't need to go through all the cars I've touched and all the builds. I've done that sort of traditionally. Um, this is just kind of a more serious reflection video and that's pretty much it. So if you guys don't like BMWs, I'm hoping I can convert you because I want to diversify my content a little bit more. You know, there's a truck back there, 78 Ford, that's getting a Godzilla swap. I haven't gotten any footage of that. Um, there's my neighbor, John's car. We've seen a little bit of that car, but we've got this. We've got the Lincoln. My dad's 58 Corvette has recently arrived for me to put that or finish putting it back together. So there's lots of non-Fox related content that I need to give attention to. You know, family is priority and I got to remember for myself, right? So we got this and I might even have another BMW coming on the way for the new year as well that I just, I need to mix it up. I need to change it up. And it, what's funny is I've gone through this before. There was a point guys, I didn't own a Fox body and all I had was BMWs. I completely, I shifted, I took a break. And not that I'm taking a break this time because I'm definitely not selling off. I'd sell, a, maybe I'd sell a couple cars. We'll see how that goes, but I'm not, selling the ones that are close, the ones that have stories, the ones that are part of the infamous projects, heritage or legacy, if you will. So that is the video that is going to close out 2023. I know a lot of people aren't watching to the end because it's just not one of those clickbaity, grab your attention videos. But to any of you that have watched all the way to now, Thank you so much for your support. The emails, the messages, the people that reach out and just say, man, you've inspired me or, you know, I love the channel. I love the content. Guys, that motivates, like, I can't even explain how much that truly means because without that, it's like, why am I even doing this, right? So thank you again for all your support. Hopefully we can figure out 2024. It might be a little bit like this in terms of the way that I'm doing videos and when I'm releasing stuff, because the growth of the channel, I'm, I'm happy with it. 
I just kind of got to figure out which direction things are going to go. And I need to focus on strategy and getting things ready for 2024. So thank you guys again. And there is a little bit of footage of this. Maybe I was going to put it into this video, but maybe I'm going to do another video and I'll focus on, you know, how is removing the mouse pee and some of the parts that I'm going through and the process of getting this thing back in a state where it can be back on the road and enjoyed and everything else, because this has been a long ramble. And you know what? I don't even think I need to edit like one portion. This is just like one nice, big, long take, which awesome. Anyways, guys, beautiful day. I wish you guys an amazing new year. And if anything, I know everyone does the new year's resolution thing and all that stuff. That's all good and dandy, but put realistic goals in place. That is my advice. Put things down on paper and get somebody or whatever you have to do to like hold you to it, right? Because there's nothing easier than quitting. But at the flip side, there's nothing more satisfying to say that you did it. Like even when me and Gary were talking, it's like we managed to do two years of weekly podcasts. Well, not yet two years, but like two weeks, it'll have been two years, which amazing accomplishment, right? So happy new year. Wishing you guys all the best. Thank you again. And we'll see you here next time on The Infamous Project.